Hello and welcome to iStock Tutorials with Shane. In this video we will be covering adding a new product, having a look at specific items and what the product details are, as well as setting up recipes. So let's take a look at some of the things that we've just discussed. So in your stock inquiries, obviously you have your list of your products based on the departments you have searched through. And here is where they will bring up all the list of items. So let's take a look at some of them. Say, for example, I want to see the product details of my burgers. So if I simply select my beef burger, it opens up a drawer and gives you all the information you need to know about this item. It gives you the full product details from names to sales unit to SKU and barcodes. It gives you your purchase tax groups, what production equivalent unit it has, um, an economic order quantity, what type of ingredient it is, what type of item it is. Is it a produced on demand or produced in batches? You can select what else it has, such as it, does it have any additional um, stock units or what recipes it has got in it and things like that. If you take a look at the bottom right here, there is, we are currently on the stock levels section of this product. You can select your recipes, stock movements, you can duplicate this item. So basically you can create a copy of the item that is being viewed currently and you can edit your product. So let's take a look at quickly what we have got here on the stock levels page. So as you can see here, there is a GP margin versus department GP target. So what this basically means is that when you create a department, you have the option to set a GP margin for that department. So in your settings and departments, when you're creating a department over here, let's take a look. You can see that Sorry, for let's open up here and let's take a look at cold drinks. You can see that the cold drinks department has got a target GP margin percentage of 80%. So that means that the all the products that are within that department of cold drinks has a 80% GP margin, target GP margin. So when we go back to stock inquiries and we take a look at our beef burger, this beef burger falls into the produced department and produced on demand. So this has a target GP margin of 80% this department. So if I select here, this is where you can set your GP margin versus your, mar your GP margin for that department. So as you can see here, you can choose to have your GP based, your gross profit based on your average cost or based on your cost per invoice. So currently it is set to cost per invoice. You can choose however you wish to have it per average cost, depends on your business's preferences. So as you can see here that the product is priced at 122 and it's got an exclusive tax price of 106 and your, the, that means that the current GP margin is 27.65%. So what it does is it can calculate a suggested price based on the percentage, the GP margin of that department. So in order to get an 80% GP margin, it gives you a suggested price that you can choose and select. You can choose to select however what you want to do. So you can necessarily make it, I can make it 152 and it calculates your excluding tax and your GP margin percentage. Now, if I choose that I want to select my price as that, I can apply the new price to the selected item and I can select however many selling locations this product is active in. And once I select that, you can see that it updates it here. And then you can choose to update your prices if you wish. Once I've updated the prices, you'll see that it has changed. So it still obviously has a higher suggested price, but you will see that my GP margin has increased since I changed it to this price. 
So this is dependent on how your business is run and how you wish to set up your GP margin, etc. Over here on the bottom, you can select a different location in which that product is available. You can have a look at, you've got your average costs and your different levels for that product. And now you can go over here and select recipes. So as you can see, this product has got a recipe. So once you select recipe, it gives you a nice view of what the ingredients are that are in that recipe, in the beef burger recipe. You can see how much is currently in stock of each ingredient, what the percentage of wastage is, if there is any, and what the cost of each ingredient is based on the amount or quantity that is required. If you need to edit your recipes, you can simply hit edit recipe here. And it, you'll see that it brings you to the recipes tab. And you can see that these are all the ingredients that are within this recipe. You can simply go and input over here whatever ingredient you're looking for, if you need to add, and you can select it that is not already in here. So you can search for the ingredients that are there. You can put in the quantity, increase the quantity, what unit it is, if it has multiple units options, and if it needs a percentage of wastage, and then you simply select add, and it will add a ingredient to the recipe here. Then you can refresh to recalculate the recipe. If I say, for example, I require two lettuces, I can go and increase the quantity to two. I can select done. And then I can go and recalculate the recipe. Once I've recalculated it, it will change whatever the quantity or the cost was. I can close here and I can also go and recalculate the recipe here. This is basically like another syncing button and it can recalculate based on what your changes were. If I want to go and duplicate the item, I can duplicate it here. I can also go and select stock levels and that therefore brings the edit product button. I can select edit product, edit product button and I can edit the product details over here can give it a button color, availability, shipping, and authorization if it is required. I can change the ingredient type to not an ingredient, ingredient only, depending on what the product is that you have. Is it a produced on demand or produced in batches? And if it has a product equivalent unit. You can change the price. As you can see that the unit cost is grayed out, you cannot change the unit cost if there is stock on hand. Neither can you change the sales unit if there is stock on hand. So if there is a stock level of greater than zero, you cannot change the sales unit for that product. You can change the department that it is in if it needs to be in a different department. And you can see here there is other tabs. Obviously we've been through the recipes and if I go to inventory, you can see that I have been brought to my settings, my inventory settings for this product. I can give it a reorder level, a target level, alert level. I can choose to allow negative stock levels for this product if that is how my business is required to run. Or I can simply not allow it. And this is where you can come and choose and add alternative stock units. As you can see here, it, my each is my current sales unit as by default. And I can select units. And if I sell it in packs of six or punnets or tots, however, whatever the product is, you can select and change and add additional stock units over here. Once you select it, so for example, over here, if you see this is an each, you can choose to give it a price is it my default order unit? Same as over here, if I choose to sell this just out of interest sake as a tot, for example, I can go and save and it will add a tot here. If I select it, I can give it a barcode, an SKU and a default order unit or not, whatever your preference is. 
I can also go over here, sorry, select unit, and I can deselect it if I do not no longer wish to have that alternative unit. I can save. The next thing I want to show you, and that would be for, say, let's go for a product that I have used more frequently, and I go to my beers, and I select this product over here, and I have a look at my stock movements. You will see that this draw brings up all the stock movements that has been related to this product. So every stock movement that this product has been through, it will show up here. You can choose to not include sales to have less clutter, or you can allow for sales to be involved. You can select the date range, the results that you wish to pull, and so on. You can see here that the movements, it is displayed what it is. So was it a stock take? It was a sale, purchase order, um, customer refunds. It gives you the references of the, of the particular movement the counterparty, so what, was it a supplier or what stock location it was transferred to, gives you the quantity before, so the quantity on hand before, the actual quantity movement, so the adjustment, and the quantity after, as well as unit cost and value. You can choose to drag and move however you wish. And you can also download the movement so this has got a great, this is a new great feature to my stock. You can choose to view only by 50 or by 20 per page, however you wish to see and filter. You can create filters here if you need to. So this is your stock movements. Edit products we've gone through, duplicating items, that is simply duplicating the exact same item, stock levels, and so on. Creating a new product is very much the same thing. You've got your input of your product details over here. Is it an ingredient type? What type is it? Is it an ingredient? Is it not an ingredient? Is it a purchased item? Is it produced on demand or in batches? And so on and so forth. You can select your sales unit once you're creating your product and you can put it into a department that you require it to go into. So for example, we are doing this product and I select here and it auto generates. I'm putting it into my ingredients and it is a sales unit of, let's find one here. Each does not have a barcode, I can give it a price of 110 and I will leave the unit cost as zero as it has not been sold yet. It is an ingredient, it is also purchased and it will be an equivalent of product equivalent of say 250 mils and I can go save and then if I go to my ingredients you will see my product is now available in my ingredients department so let's take a look at building a recipe. So if I go to some of my produced on demand items, or let's say produced in batches, and I select the sourdough bread, I can go to my recipe, and I can edit a recipe, and I can go and add in my items that I need, it will be one of these, and I can select mills, and I can select maybe I need 25 mills of that, I can add that, I can change my batch size to one or however I need,
and you'll see that it gives and it bases a cost and it will say that the total cost of this one batch is 878. I can close, I can recalculate if I need to, to sync. And you can see that I have now created a recipe for this product. And that is how you add a product, how you create your recipes, as well as the information when you're having a look at your products.